Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create the most realistic neon glow in Photoshop. I sh you not in just one click. And this isn't clickbait, no BS. One click to go from this to this. So first I'm gonna explain the two most common ways that most designers create neon. I did these two and I'm gonna explain why they're not the best. And then I'll share with you the secret of how to create this neon effect in literally a single click. And this technique is something that I learned from the channel Texture Labs, but I didn't wanna keep going through the same process over and over again every time I needed neon, which it turns out is a lot. I love me some neon. So over the next eight minutes, I'm gonna show you something that means you will never ever have to create neon ever again. And this video is also sponsored by friend of the channel Invato Elements and they've given me a one year subscription to give away, but more details on that later in the video. Okay, that's enough hype, Dan, just get to it, Ginger. Let's boot up Photoshop and get started. Right here, so the first thing is to create a new document. The dimensions are basically 4K and the color mode is set to RGB for brighter, more vibrant colors. And I'm using 16 bits per channel, which can give smoother gradients and less banding. First, let's grab the paint bucket tool and fill the background with black. Then I'm going to select the type tool, click anywhere and type a word. And it's not just text, you can do this with vector graphics imported from Illustrator, for example, and the process is pretty much the same. Right, let's increase the text. No, not that much, calm down, Dan. So let's make the text a bit bigger, align the text itself centrally, and then actually move the text to the center of the canvas. There we go, bang on in the middle, lovely. Now you can right click the text and go to blending options, check out a glow, and then play around with these settings. So yes, that is one way to do it, or perhaps you've also tried this technique. And this involves basically adding loads of drop shadows to essentially create a staggered glow. So the innermost glow would be very close to the text and a lot harder, and the outermost glow would be spread out and a lot softer. And yeah, this kind of works. I guess it can be useful in certain situations, but it is nothing compared to the technique that we're gonna use now. Okay, so we'll keep everything we've done so far, minus those blending options. So let's right click the layer and clear the layer style. And next we're even gonna trash the background. Off you go. And next we're going to select the text and from the color picker, set this to white or a very light color. Okay, all looking good. Next, let's go to Window and down to Actions, and this will bring up the Actions panel. And this is the fun part. But before we have too much fun, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements, a quite honestly awesome platform that offers millions of creative assets with unlimited downloads, all with a commercial license. They now offer a free seven day trial so you can try it out. And the amount of creative assets available is quite honestly insane. I use it for most of my creative projects almost every day, actually. And I think you're really gonna like it, especially when it's just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription and there's a link below if you'd like to check it out. Invato also have a YouTube channel called Tuts Plus, which posts loads of tutorial style videos for all sorts of different apps. And they even do full on courses, completely free of course, because uh, YouTube. And they've also given me a code to give away for a one year subscription to Invato Elements completely free. So if that sounds good, there's a post on Instagram that relates to this video. Just leave a comment, follow the page at Forever Dansky, and then I'll go ahead and pick a winner in a few days. So yeah, just uh, keep an eye on your DMs. So if you'd like to check out Invato Elements or Tuts Plus, I'll leave a couple of links in the video description. And now back to the video. Okay, so we've opened up our actions panel. I'm going to add a new folder and give this probably the most boring name possible. And then I'm going to click the button alongside to create a new action. And once I press record, everything I do in Photoshop is going to be logged to this action. So the first thing to do is right click the text layer, go all the way to the bottom, and then all the way back up to convert to smart object. Then from the filter drop down, I can apply a Gaussian blur effect. And depending on your document size, you can vary these values. I'm going to start with one pixel and then I can right click and duplicate the layer or press the shortcut command or control J. Double click the Gaussian blur value and increase this to something like five. Duplicate the layer again and increase the blur value even more. Let's go for 20. And I'm just going to repeat this step a few more times. Ooh, let's go for a thousand. God, this is getting crazy. Okay, so now with the top layer selected, let's add a new solid color adjustment layer, set the color to black, and then use the shortcut on screen to send this layer to the bottom of the layer stack. Next, go up to layer, uh, wait, no, select, and down to all layers. There we go. Okay, now we actually need to go to the layer menu and group these layers together. Now let's give that group a name. Neon text, oh, how original. Call yourself a designer, Dan. Okay, next add a gradient map adjustment layer. 
and then if you click on the gradient slider it will bring up this window. So at the moment we have the default black to white gradient and we can click anywhere on the gradient slider to add two more swatches. And I'm going to change the color of this first one to a blue. Let's drag this up so it's nice and bright. And this one is going to be a lighter blue, a bit more on the cyan side. There we go, something like this looks good. But there we go, we do have something that somewhat resembles neon, but let's keep going. So next we're going to space all of these swatches an equal distance apart, and I'm just going to explain what each one does. So the swatch on the left is for your background, that's everything behind your glow effect. The next one is your outermost glow, and after that you've got your innermost glow, which is the one that hugs the text the most. And the last one is how you change the color of the text itself, but personally I would keep this white or a very, very light color. Similarly with the background, I wouldn't make this like a bright red or something, I would keep this color very dark. So in this example you can see I'm using a very dark blue so it matches the other colors. And as I mentioned before, if you do change the text to red, you can see it doesn't look very good. So a lighter color is definitely the way to go here. And when it comes to the actual glow effect coming off of the text itself, these two inner swatches are the ones you're going to want to pay close attention to. And I'm just going to take a minute to tinker with these colors, so I'll see you in a moment. Now once you've created your perfect gradient, you can give this a name and you can also save this. Just be mindful if you do this when recording like I'm doing here. This will be included in your action, and every time you run your action, it will recreate these gradients. And you can see here, I've tweaked the colors to create another gradient. I'm gonna call this Fire Neon. And like I say, any new gradients that you create, I would just do it after you've stopped the recording. You can also export these gradients, and I've also linked to these gradients in the video description if you'd like to download them for yourself. So this is looking pretty good. Let's click OK. And then if we hover between the two layers and hold Alter Option and click, we can add a clipping mask so the adjustment layer only affects the group below. Right, now we're done, let's stop recording. And if you do want to change the text, double click any of the smart objects in the folder, go up to image, down to canvas, make this a lot bigger so we have a bit more space. There we go. And now I can select the text and change the font to something different. And I'm going to use the font Nikane. Oh, oh, I haven't installed it yet. Well done, Dan. Good job. Way to be prepared. Lol. Okay, so yes, we will need to download the font first. Let's do a search for Nikane Normal, and I've linked this in the video description if you'd like to follow along. So let's go ahead and download the font and then install the font. <sighs> let's try that again, shall we? There we go, the font has appeared. And yes, it does look pretty terrible in caps. So yeah, let's go ahead and fix that. There we go, much better. And now what we can do is close that document, select save, and it will take us back to the main document and those changes will be updated. So that's how you change your text using smart objects. And next I'm going to select all of the layers and press Command or Control T to use free transform to reduce the size because it's just a wee bit too big at the moment. Okay, so that looks good, but now it's time to delete all of these layers because we need to test and see if the action works. Hopefully it does. So let's go back to the very beginning, right click that smart object, Go all the way down and all the way back up to convert to layers. Select no here and we'll have our text layer back fully editable. So let's just resize this and pop it back in the center. Scroll to the top of the actions panel and select the action we created earlier. And this is the moment of truth. Will this work or is Dansky just a big ginger clickbaiting bastard? Well, let's find out. As promised, one click neon in Photoshop. Whew. If you'd like to download the action, you can find it linked in the video description. Thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. And if you'd like more of the same, I've got a video here and here that I think you might enjoy. But as always, you've been fantastic. Take care, and I'll see you next time.